in this video, we're going to check out a pre-built over 200 game PS Classic build that you can fit on a 128 gigabyte thumb drive. Here it is using AutoBleam Beta 2. But I'm also going to show you how to upgrade this to Beta 3 and then Beta 4 in the future. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this and then we'll check it out. Okay, remember you do need to format your SD card as FAT32. I'm using East US. And then the second thing we want to do is you want to extract this with like 7-zip. So I'm just going to do 7-zip. I'm just going to extract it here. And this is going to take some time, but it'll extract out all the files we need. You cannot transfer it over until you unzip it first. Once you're done extracting, you should have the folder here. Go ahead and open up. You just want to go ahead and control C and control V it onto your formatted FAT32 drive named Sony. As you can see here, I've already transferred them. It really fills this thing up, only three gigabytes left. Um, you can see over here in games, you have a very nice sorted with file system all set up for you. So if you're wondering what games are included, here they are. I believe it's over 100 games, so it's kind of like having one of those little blues USB drives. And there you go. You get double the games. You get 280 games here. So pretty cool to see that. We're going to go ahead and pull it out of our computer and put it into our PlayStation Classic and Player 2 slot. All right. So as you see, I'm just running the regular PS Classic here. So let's go ahead and turn it off. Press the power button here. And what I've done here is I have the 128 gigabyte Samsung Fit USB thumb drive. I also have this one I've been playing around with. This is just a... Um, it's basically a USB and a USB type C and you could put a micro SD card and I have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card in here. There you go. 128 gigabyte micro SD card. I got this for prime day. It's kind of overkill. You could get a Sandus Ultra, no problem. Um, but both work, trust me, especially with my new setup, which now I'm running a powered hub. See the hub itself has its own power source. So we're not going to draw as much power from the PS Classic. This one has four ports. There you go. So you can still play up to four player games or two player games. You just plug your second player controller in here as well. But all we're going to be doing for this video is first off, oh, I almost made a mistake there. You notice how the PlayStation is still on standby power. You want to make sure the PlayStation is completely off. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. As you see now, the light is now off. And at this point, I can plug in my USB thumb drive, which we loaded up from my computer. Now it's in there. All right, yellow light is on. Let's go ahead and turn this on. And you should see some amber lights. There you go, that's a good sign. If you don't see the amber lights, your USB is not powerful enough. It's gonna boot straight to the, um, the stock system. All right, let's turn off the music there and then we'll start it up. All right, and here we are, alphabetical order, starting with 007 Racing. And uh, it's just like your, look, this one even has a save state already on it still. Somebody was playing some Smurf 321. Uh, so this should still use your save states. Uh, once you set this up, you can leave it plugged into that USB drive. Um, you can see here all the pictures are here for the artwork. I'm just gonna have a little scroll here. This is running um, AutoBleam Beta 2. Now there's recently a Beta 3, and hey, you know, months from now there's gonna be a Beta 4. But don't don't worry, there's an easy way to update this. There's really no reason to update unless you're modifying it and adding features that you want. If this is totally fine with you, I would just use this. You're totally cool, it's not a big deal at all. But uh, if you want to, it's actually quite easy. Just plug it into your computer. There's a little README file, but basically you just want to copy over the AutoBleam files. And then if you want to play it safe, you can back up your uh, save states and your artwork. Um, but as you see here, really cool stuff. Um, custom front end. You can definitely change out the themes if that's what you're into. That's an option for you. A lot of people ask me how this emulates. I mean, it emulates just fine. Um, some purists out there, you know, might be able to poke a hole into it, but for the most part, it's there. It says 90% there. Um, 
And then as far as other options out there, uh, recently I did a video on True Blue, which is a plug and play 64 gigabyte that you can buy on Amazon. It's $20 for 100 games. Um, the thing is you could probably get this set up with a really nice, um, you know, uh, micro SD card or a thumb drive, um, you know, some sort of USB solution, you can get twice as much space and a USB 3.0, which is faster. So um, this is the better option if you have a little bit of patience. Um, this works really, really well, as you see here. So here we are in K. Keep moving along here. Um, really nice selection of games. Now, I'm going to play some gameplay in a moment. We'll play some Marvel vs. Capcom. Um, but do note that I'm still running I need I, my monitor will be fixed tomorrow so that's cool the Namco Museum the way that looks on there that's, that's cool NBA Jam need for speed some good hockey games sport games some RPGs wow they got Pepsi man on here that's a great game for those of you who've never played it before uh, Rampage 1 and 2 and World Tour some good racing games Raymond Resident Evils Ridge Racer uh, we're getting towards close the end road rash so it's that easy um, I'll show you how to update it at the end of the video if you're interested and uh, as I mentioned this is one of the better solutions um, you know or build it yourself from scratch but you know the other thing too is it's really easy to get into your Windows Explorer and um, with the Windows Explorer you can uh, add and remove games you need to find the ROMs but uh, there's ROM sites all over the place you can also update this to like a 256 gigabyte thumb drive. Absolutely. The only thing with the thumb drives is you have to do FAT32 and it has to be called SONY in all caps. Other than that, a lot of this is drag and drop. Again though, something that if you missed it earlier, I have noticed that once a, um, a USB drive gets to, um, we're all just about to end and then I'll launch a game, X-Men, X-Men 2. All right, back to 007. Once you launch a drive, um, once you start loading up a thumb drive, it actually consumes more power. And so I want to play Wipeout. Let's check out Wipeout really quick. Let's do the newest one, Wipeout 3. Um, once you start loading up, because when I did my first tutorial, it was very easy to do. I didn't have a lot of games on there, and you actually don't need a powered... USB. However, once like this thing is fully loaded, 128 gigabytes, pretty much like 120 gigabytes, um, it's going to draw more power from the PlayStation. So what you need to do is have a separate dedicated power source for that USB drive. And so that's what we did here is we got a cheap little $10 one. You can get this one I'm using. Um, I did do a lot of research. I tried to find the cheapest, um, something slim. I can tell you it's fairly cheap, the cord and stuff. If you got cats or dogs, this is going to be really hard for me to play because I'm playing on a delay here, as I mentioned. I'm playing through my capture card. I'm not playing through a monitor directly, so I have a little bit of a delay. So think of this like drunk driving without having to drink anything. Um, so as I was mentioning, the one I uh, put in the links below, I'm talking about the four-port USB hub with the, um, with the two-amp power supply um, it got good reviews there's this website called fake spot that will uh, look out for fake reviews and this one uh, got pretty good ones but as I mentioned I have a kid and he sometimes I you know hold him up to my computer and he likes to play with the keyboard and stuff like that I just unplug everything and then he was messing with this cord and it actually bent quite a bit so do know that the cord is fragile on this thing the power cord but that's what you get for $10. I mean, if you want something nice, you can buy an aluminum one and you can spend $20 or $30. And then, um, you know, there you go. So as you can see, it looks good. It should, I think Select and Triangle should, okay, Select and Triangle does get you to the, uh, to the, to the setup menu and you can easily exit. Um, let's go ahead and try exiting it that way to start. Okay, it worked, great. Um, you didn't want me to save a state. So remember, I want to play Marvel vs. Capcom. Okay, you can easily get into customize audibly uh, settings pretty easily there by just going down in any game to settings. Oh, did I already make it through? 
That's interesting to start me back at A when I did that. Um, let me play Marvel vs. Capcom. And I already I usually play a lot of fighting games, so maybe I'll play a different game. There's always some comment about me playing whack games. <laughs> Drew talks, you play whack games. Sorry guys. I play whack games. Alright, let's try this one. Um, what was I talking about? The USB hub. Uh, you could do that. You can buy something nicer, and you can double duty it if you want. Or some of you are just going to be keeping it plugged in. I haven't made a yet a video yet on Bleem Sync. That's another additional mod you could do. It's not too hard, but basically it would allow you to add a USB, uh, an external USB slot to the back of your system, and um, what that allows you to do is hide all this stuff. You know, rather than having it in the front of your system. So as you can see, the sound is crisp. No big issues there. Let's go easy since I'm on a delay here. Since I'm... Uh, Okay, now I'm getting wrecked. Oh, he blocked that one pretty good. Who let the dogs out? get to me my second one all right let's try exiting a different way this time we're gonna go ahead and hit the reset button on our PS classic a hard hit on the reset button cool that worked just as good all right let's do one more game and while we're doing that game I'll give you my final thoughts so we did racing I did a puzzle game in a previous video I've done Grand Theft Auto I've done a racing game maybe a shooter a uh, all right so i love this and this is just the beginning i've seen other people making builds um like this you know uh people getting you know everyone wants you know their game oh this one doesn't have metal gear solid oh this one doesn't have spyro 3 whatever spyro 2 spyro 20 whatever uh, so there's always going to be finding the build you want, but really that shouldn't be a, um, a factor for you because as I mentioned, it's really easy to just add your own game to this. So if there's a missing game, just go and add it. So just find one that has the majority of what you want on it. Now that being said, there, um, there is, um, so many of these builds out there and the, the auto bleam keeps getting better and better. Am I hitting the wrong button? How did I die? Was I hitting something? Wow, that's pretty bad. That was really bad. Um, 
Let's do this. Force field. Destroy them all. Oh, it's glitching. That's why. That was crazy. Alright, let's reset that. Not sure if that's the game or the emulation or my monitor. Let's try this one. Uh, so as these new packs come out with these newer versions, it's going to be great. Um... I think you're gonna, we're eventually going to have like dozens of these, um, and then also people are working on like these 500 one terabyte builds where, um, you know, as long as you have a powered hub, you can easily run a, a solid state hard drive via USB or you know potentially an external hard drive. Now I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. I'm sure there's going to be certain ones that are going to work specifically for the PlayStation Classic. Am I not hitting the right buttons? Okay, I got to hit O on this one. Um, let's go semi-auto. So, with all that, um, you know, it opens up a lot more doors. So, for those reasons, this is great. Um, on these earlier builds, I, I imagine, okay, see, this one's working just fine. On these earlier builds, I imagine it's going to be a little more difficult to get them perfect. You might find a broken game or a broken artwork or so. Um, but I think eventually you might see a build with, you know, these like like these big Raspberry Pi builds where you have uh, RetroArch, you have Game Boy Advance, you have Game Boy, you have all that, plus you have, you know, multi-hundred PlayStation games. Um, you know, as far as performance, the Raspberry Pi does perform better, though. But a lot of this comes down to the hacking community and, the and you know, how cheap you can get these things. I mean, if you bought one for $20, you can easily hack it for under 50 you know get everything you need for around 50 now you have a two-player hack system for $50 um, the other thing with the Raspberry Pi you're really looking at 70 to $100 for a good setup now can it be done for cheaper yes but um, I still think this is just really hard to beat with the price point all right let's go ahead and exit so for this next part, I'm going to, what I did was I went to the AutoBloom website. I'll put a link to that and I downloaded the AutoBloom Retro Boot Beta 3. I went ahead and I did 7-zip. I extracted it. It should extract all these new files here. Um, so there's have all the games here. That's an empty folder. So I'm just going to take everything except the games folder and I'm going to go ahead and transfer it over. And then it should ask me, do you want to, um, do you want to overwrite? And just go ahead and say yes. Once this is all done transferring over, I'm just going to go ahead and put it back into the PlayStation Classic. This is my first boot with the AutoBleam version three. This is after I transferred those files to update this older beta two image to beta three image. And there you go. Now it's AutoBleam beta three. If I hit select here, you know the options have changed. I have to re-turn off my background music. All right, so the music, and let's just go turn that off. Oh. Okay, good, got it. And then we hit start. And then here we go, the newest version of AutoBleam with the same image we were on earlier. So there you go. So there you have it. As I mentioned, this is one of the earlier builds. It's on AutoBleam Beta 2. You're seeing a couple builds like this. But as far as you know, an alternative to hacking your PlayStation, these pre-built images are really easy, drag and drop, pretty simple to do. Um, so I got to give this one an A for now, uh, but I know that it's going to fall to a B, C within the next month just because we're going to see newer versions coming out. Um, 
and they're just going to be totally blown away as far as themes and how many you know files you can fit on 128 gigabyte and then you're going to go into 256 so the, the the future is bright with all that said though this is a great build to start with let me know if you have any questions don't forget to like and subscribe special shout out to yb for working on this build and we'll uh, catch you on the next one